So as concerning as all that may be, I want to point out that I have a suspicion that the failure rate of each truck is determined by how many times it was run extremely low of fuel where it's ingesting a bunch of air, how it was started when it first was started to get primed fully, and obviously there, there's not a gauge that says you've primed your fuel system properly. And some of you, you, you smart guys that are following me close, you're saying, now wait a minute, what about the filter change? And you're right, give me a minute. You're exactly correct. So how many times did the truck get run out of fuel or run low on fuel where that pump is being worn before you even bought the truck? That is concerning. And I think probably a realistic contributor to failures of CP4 pumps. Now, now you own the truck. You're driving the truck every day. And you need to change your fuel filter. How are you priming your fuel filter after you just got done emptying the upper housing, hopefully replacing the upper housing on a power stroke, putting in a new upper fuel filter, putting in, taking off the housing down, uh, you know, for the, the first fuel filter, Taking that off, sliding in a new filter, all the fuel comes out, you've drained the water separator, you know, you're, you're pretty dry at this point. Are you just keying the truck on and because the truck fires up in a couple cranks, are you happy with that? Or are you keying on several times to prime the system? And is that even doing anything? Because once you have air in front, the air's got to pass. So you key on, you key on, you key on, and then you go and start it. Is that really adequately priming the pump? There's probably gonna be a head of fuel behind there, but is it truly removing the air from reaching the fuel pump before the fuel does? I don't know. So the end discussion here is, I don't ever see this being talked about, this running out of fuel at manufacture, at transportation, and at the dealership. I've never seen, besides me talking about it, I've never seen anybody else talk about it. And I'm convinced it's a contributing factor to why some trucks fail early, some trucks don't fail at all, some trucks fail late in their lifespan. Like, you know, 200,000 miles, 150,000, 150 is kind of not low, but, you know, 270 or 175 plus. You know, I'd say that's later in the truck's life cycle. I think that that's the reason for it. And I'm all for comments, concerns, if you got any questions, if you have any personal experience with a dealership running out of vehicle, running a vehicle out of fuel with you around. Uh, what triggered this whole search is I saw on my, uh, I went to Kettering University in Flint. I saw some discussion on the group page that there are several broken down trucks just down the road leaving the production facility in Flint and going to their spot. And that's what made me think, I'm like, that can't be normal. And then I asked some questions and I found out that that's not abnormal. And then I asked a little bit more questions and found out that there's a lot of places where the vehicles might be run out of fuel before you get to even buy your truck. And then you have to service your truck and put new filters on, filters on to which you are naturally introducing air and lack of fuel to the fuel pump. So I, I leave you with that. What, what you guys might think is up to you. I am interested to hear what you guys think about that. I haven't really heard anybody offer up anything besides, oh, they're drunk, put a DCR on it or whatever. You know, when you put an aftermarket pump on, let's just say your methods for changing your fuel filters are 100% on point, okay? So all the damage occurred at the manufacturer. When you go and put the new pump on, you've removed the possibility of the manufacturer, the production facility, the transportation personnel, and the dealership from impacting the life of your truck. So I wonder how these new pumps, the CP3, CP4X or whatever the heck it is, and, and the DCR, I wonder how they'd hold up with the production environment of being run out of fuel potentially multiple times. I'm told it's potential that at a dealership multiple times the truck can be, get ran out of fuel. I'm told in transportation it can run out of fuel multiple times. And I'm told that they can run out of fuel at the manufacturer multiple times. So if you add all those up, let's just say it's two times a piece, 
six times and you own the life of your truck, I've never, ever ran a truck out of fuel in my life. Ever. Never. Never once. But before you even buy it, before you even think about owning this vehicle, it may have been ran out of fuel between zero and six times, let's just say. I think that should be a concern, and I think that we should be talking about how we can improve that. So, and the, and the only way we're going to do it is by talking about it as a as a consumer community and point out that there's a problem here. Now, some of this may be anecdotal, but I went directly to sources to, who work at said companies uh, to find out whether it was true or not. And from what I found, I was a little bit appalled, I'm not going to lie, from talking to these people. So... You all have a great day. I hope you have a great opening day of Michigan deer season in a couple days. I hope you uh, shoot straight, have good luck, and I hope Fred Bear is uh, guiding your bullet true. Take care all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.